G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy and the Eagles Corner. Uh, yeah, I know I said during the last one there would be no reason to do an Eagles Corner video anytime soon, but uh, every now and then a story will pop up and I thought this one was worth exploring on the channel. This little uh, feud between, uh, well, in particular the, uh, Peter Sumich, but also the West Australian in general, and the uh, coach of the Eagles, Adam Simpson. Essentially, uh, Sumich wrote a really scathing article about uh, Simpson going on leave for a couple of weeks, so we're going to cover that in this video. First of all, before we crack into it though, I do just want to say uh, a big shout out to our first two members on the True Footy YouTube channel. We've got Leo King and Brooklyn Keynes. If you're not aware, the channel is now offering memberships. You can check it out by hitting the uh, join button below and you can see what you can get for a membership by supporting the channel as well. So I just wanted to shout out those two individuals. I very, very much appreciate you and I also appreciate the rest of you for watching. Now let's talk about this article written by Peter Sumich about Adam Simpson. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sort of quote excerpts of the article and then I'm going to sort of give dot points about uh, what I think about each line and then I'll give you sort of my overall thoughts on it as well and I am quite intrigued to see uh, what Eagles fans do think about this particular article because I think it will be divisive and I think that's exactly what Peter Sumich was going for knowing he'd alienate 50% of people and probably get the other 50% on board so Essentially, uh, what so much said was, first of all, there's just no way that West Coast coach Adam Simpson should have missed the past fortnight of Eagles training to head overseas on leave. So to clarify what's been happening, Adam Simpson obviously missed a couple of weeks of training here um, to go to America. This trip, from what I can understand, was both a personal leave trip with some some of his family, I think he took a couple of his kids, uh, but was also part of that, he was going to uh, spend some time with the Philadelphia Eagles, learning a little bit about how that football operation works uh, from a business point of view. So it was a mixed uh, trip between personal and business. Swimich goes on to say that a coach should be in charge and in total control of all training and pivotal football operations across his entire program, particularly at this vital stage of summer preparation for a new season. Swimich says that he should not have been able to go on leave with such a young Eagle squad launching a new era that Simpson himself has trumpeted. Okay, so first of all, I just note the very exaggerated language here. Like, for instance, the phrase, he needs to have total control over all football operations is just it, you can tell when somebody's trying to force a narrative into something. The language he's using is just a little bit much. I also would challenge the words vital stage. Maybe that's my own ignorance here, but in terms of where we're at in the preseason, right before Christmas break, what actually makes it the most vital stage of the preseason right now, as opposed to, you know, when they first come back and go through all their testing again, as opposed to like right before round one, you know, why, why is this more important than others? I think he's just kind of thrown that in there to make a point, but we'll keep reading. So much then goes on to say the besieged coach then missed some crucial end of season play reviews, which is interesting, leaving those delicate assessments of individual performance performances to wellbeing manager Drew Petrie. Simpson instead holidayed at his Margaret River retreat in the immediate aftermath of this controversial survival, although he did apologize to players ahead of the best and fairest awards. Now, first things first, um, I, I've been a manager before in, in a retail, but like workplace environment. I know it's not the same thing as being a senior coach, uh, but delegating certain performance reviews was not a very uncommon thing. The way you would do it was generally prepare it with somebody and then delegate that person to deliver it. Now, as a general rule, the ones that were going to be the most difficult conversations and the most intricate would not be the ones delegated. So I don't know, maybe it's just my perspective here, but I don't think it's so crazy they left a handful of them to Drew Petrie. Sumich then goes on to say that that did not go down well with the uh, playing group at the time. And that's an interesting thing to say because I'm curious as to what his source is for that. He says many players were puzzled by why the coach had not conducted end of season evaluations and disclosed ambitious plans for revival after such a horrible past two seasons. Now, maybe that's true. Maybe that's true. But I'm a little skeptical with Peter Sumich. At the same time, though, I can't help but feel that the, the emotion that Sumich is writing about Adam Simpson here is somewhat akin to what people were saying about Scott Morrison when he went to Hawaii. He says, Simpson is apparently combining his two-week trip to New York with fact-finding excursions into top NFL outfit, the Philadelphia Eagles. Personal leave or any degree of professional development still cannot be justified while critical development training is in full swing. Okay, so the first thing I wanna say here is later on in this video, I'm going to point out how many other coaches in the league are doing this exact same thing. 
There's also, I think it's reasonable to consider that why now? Well, it probably also depends on the calendar from the perspective of uh, the Philly Eagles. They can't necessarily just accommodate a foreign coach into their ranks, um, you know, willy-nilly. There's there's probably going to be, you know, an allowance for the, the fact they've got to line up dates. I'll keep reading though. He says, even more important to consider here is that Simpson now has at his disposal highly touted top draft pick Harley Reid as the biggest West Coast import since superstar Chris Judd. This is kind of cringe, but I'm going to keep reading. Every outing that Reid and his youthful rebuilding group has is decisive. It is generating strength and conditioning, growing their skills, and vitally learning everything about the requirements to become an AFL player. This is so cringy. Like the the, the, the use of the phrase generating strength and conditioning. You ever just feel like somebody's just trying to force an argument down your throat and it's just trying to use stronger language and trying to seem intelligent, but it's actually having the opposite effect. What I'll say as well here is I think what Sumich is basically implying is that Simmer needs to be there micromanaging them. And look, Sumich has been involved at elite level AFL, not just as a player, he's been involved as a coach. And I completely get that he has more knowledge about the way things work in this environment. But because I'm a little bit suspicious of his bias, I will go ahead and say that I'm skeptical that it's ever the case that a senior coach really is micromanaging every single player on their list they're very much doing an overseeing sort of role i would have thought and that's why there's development coaches etc as well and that's another point i'll make you know even if you don't agree with that is the fact that you know if there's so many new players and young players to this list somewhat true those players are still acclimatizing to their new environment the the other new players on the list the senior players on their list that have been around for a while the facilities and all the extensive staff that the eagles have so the idea that you take away the head coach here is going to dramatically reduce their ability to acclimatize their environment is ridiculous they're gonna they're probably overstimulated as it is I just think he's forcing the point a little bit hard there. So much goes on to say, there will be members of the Eagles faithful who think my views on Simpson and his latest leave of absence is too harsh and perhaps unfair, but it is simply unacceptable not being at every session with his group, a young group of players. I wonder what West Coast members, fans and commercial sponsors, as well as even Eagles insiders and players actually think of the coach being away while training is in full swing. West Coast has won just seven of the last 54 games and only four of the last 29 at home in front of uh, devoted members. I do have to laugh at the, the use of the term devoted members. It's trying to be emotive and trying to get people reading it to be like, yeah, I'm a devoted member. To be honest, I'm a devoted member and I don't really care. It's also interesting to note that he acknowledges he already knows how this uh, this article is going to be received. If Simpson wanted to head to the US, either privately with his family or to enhance his own coaching development, then go in September or October when players and staff are on leave. So again, I will point out this could be down to availability with the Philly Eagles. Uh, it's not necessarily probably true that uh, Simpson could just go whenever he wants. Uh, but I would also point out that during September and October, you still got fairly critical periods of uh, preparing list management decisions. And, uh, you know, from what we can tell, Simpson is fairly involved in those. So as far as I'm concerned, there's never really a good time to go away. I mean, you can go over the Christmas break, but again, you know, he'd be sacrificing his Christmas break to do a trip that is partially for his career development. So much then says, even a personal development trip should have been planned uh, from about round six or seven at the end of April when West Coast had managed just one win and were definitely out of finals calculations for 2023. So I just want to point out, and I think he knows this, I think he knows what I'm about to say here, and that is that Simpson's head was being called for from that early in the season. There was literally calls for them to sack Simo with that much uncertainty, and I know they were backing him for the most part, but with that much uncertainty about the fact that he was going to be there next year, is it really... Is it really fair to suggest West Coast should have been planning a personal development trip for this coach? I think that is deliberate ignorance. Okay, so that's that's most of Sumich's article. I I wanna point out the the other coaches that have done very similar things this off season. So Adelaide coach Matthew Nix and Adam Kelly, uh, their head of football, opted to to go to uh, New Zealand to I think spend time with the All Blacks or New Zealand rugby generally. Adam Kingsley from GWS has gone to America to spend time with the Miami Heat, Miami Dolphins, and the Florida Panthers. And then he's going to Boston and Philadelphia. So we're seeing a trend here with other coaches. Sam Mitchell is going uh, with Adrian Hickmott to go to Tottenham in the Premier League. Alistair Clarkson has gone to the US again. Um, and apparently he is going to the West Coast, it just says. And then three Sydney coaches, John Longmire, Dean Cox, Jared McVeigh, have been put through their paces 
with a busy US trip, so it doesn't know exactly where they're going. But that's that's five teams there, you know, with, I don't know how many coaches I just named, like 10, um, who are leaving the country to go spend time at other professional organizations to learn about their football operations or sport operations, whatever you want to call it. So it's not as though Simpson's the only one doing this, and I have to say, I can't help but point out the fact that I would guarantee that if Simpson wasn't doing this, there would be an article about how the Eagles are insular and not being innovative enough to try and learn from other, you know, sport organizations so to sum up with this article you know it's one of those things where on a micro level like there's probably some good points in there and it's not entirely untrue like ideally he'd be there for every training session sure and in an ideal world you know him conducting all of the player reviews might have been a good look it might have been better than not for sure but the the emotional um, diarrhea that was coming through this article really just undermined so much's point and I will point out that Sumich is the guy that missed out on this job due to Adam Simpson winning it. It was down to those two guys. And I got to say, it just reads like an angry man that is, uh, what's the word, vengeful or jealous? I I don't know what word you want to use. But like I said, I think Simpson and the West Australian relationship has gotten to the point where he will be criticized for anything. And I'm not trying to paint him like a saint. There has been some good points, I think, made by Mitch Woodcock, you know, at times but i'm going to point out a really silly argument when i see it and the the article itself is very cringe uh again i also think there's a bit of an overemphasis on on all the new kids that have come into this list yeah sure there's like 21 or 22 kids under 21 but if you're looking at who's actually new to this environment now we took four national draft picks a couple of rookie picks if you include cohen livingston we traded in two players that's pretty similar to every other year and it's about average for total list changes so the idea that there's so many players on the list and the fact that he even mentioned harley reed like adam Simpson has to be there to please the number one pick i think that was a bit of a weak point as well and there's also this well-being element that people seem to have forgotten you know a few months ago we were hearing that um that the eagles were going to send simpson on, on a period of leave to sort of recover from a mental point of view because that would have been a really tough year for him and I'm not saying he necessarily needs that but it's interesting how he takes a couple of weeks that was a partial business trip and suddenly he's being slammed for it for being lazy and that, that's what this is implying it's, it's um, maybe not lazy is the word but you know not invested enough and I think I just think this article was silly to be honest like again I, uh, I'm, I'm keen to hear people who disagree with me and I don't I don't necessarily think people who agree with so much Uh, are silly or anything like that my actual issue is the way the article is written i think it's a little bit sad uh that being said if there are people out there who have criticisms of of what is uh being talked about in this article let us know in the comments absolutely um and i'm keen to hear from all facets of west coast fans um like i said it's not not targeting everyone who disagrees with me it's uh targeting the quality of this article which i think was left lacking but anyway guys that was just my take on the uh the simo article uh by sumich again Um, I am not sure how often I'll do these Eagles Corner videos, but if there's something to talk about and I found this one particularly interesting, uh, we can go from there. But anyway, hope you're enjoying the content and I'll see you in the next video. And before I go, because I'm uploading videos in such random order, I've lost track of time. I think you're going to see this on Christmas Eve, so please have a Merry Christmas and I'll see you on the other side.